All right, this week it's time to get into a, uh, a supplement that I have yet to get into. That's probably one of, if not the most popular one out there. It's good old protein powders. Now, the reason why they are so popular is because it's an easy way for people to get in extra protein and everything. So, if you look at most protein powders that are out there, you're usually getting about 25 to 30 grams of protein. So you can easily see why it's like a, so popular because it's a quick, uh, an easy source of protein. You just mix it in with eight ounces of water and you sit there and like chug it and like, oh hey, I just got 25, 30 grams of protein and everything. Of course, another thing that's popular, like something that like I do myself, is that like people tend to mix it in with like a milk and everything. So it pretty much, again, like I said, jacks up your protein intake. So for instance, like with the, the cereal that I eat, I usually go with Cheerios. I'll sit there and with the 16 ounces of uh, uh, milk, I'll add in like uh, the one serving of the, the protein powder I use to give myself an extra 30 grams of protein. And so when it comes to micronutrients, I'm always big on like, look, you prioritize your protein first so that way you know you're getting in like uh, what you need f to help you uh, in every any physical activity that uh, endeavor that you do, whether it's lifting, uh, uh, cardio, uh, like, uh, if you're running marathons uh, or 5K, 10K, or you're a sprinter or any sport that you get into, having like uh, adequate protein is uh, so important. So this is why the protein powders are so popular. Now, of course, I came across, like, I just like, recently just came across, like, the uh, health.harvard.edu article that was uh, talking about the negative side effects. And so, of course, me, I'm biased for protein powders. And so, like, reading the article, it's like, well, yeah, that's, uh, there's no negative side effects, but it's total bullshit. No, I got to pause and detach myself from my emotions and everything and realize that I, like I said, I am biased towards protein powders because I've been using them for years. Now, and the article talks about like the negative side effects that it can have on people, uh, people's health and everything. And of course, uh, the most popular one is the whey protein. So like, for instance, people that are lactose intolerant, if they have like a whey protein, it might not necessarily be a good thing for them to do. And so this article gets into like also, a big thing is like with the whole uh, the whole supplement industry, not just protein powders, but it's not FDA regulated. So you see this a lot of times that the FDA won't step in until something bad happens. Like you, you'll see like a, someone come out with like a pre workout that has maybe double the dosage of like uh, caffeine or something, and then like uh, someone will have an adverse reaction to it, or like a uh, 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 something will make the news, and then of course, and then the FDA steps in like, oh hey, look, enough enough uh, enough of this. Uh, this ingredient, not necessarily caffeine itself, but this ingredient in this, uh, these pre-workouts or whatever, or this ingredient in this supplement, I call that, that that's a no-go. It's actually no good and everything. So unfortunately, uh, with the supplement industry not being regulated, it, do, it does unfortunately take something like that to uh, happen for the FDA to uh, step in. So this is why like uh, I'm sharing this article so that way people can see like, yeah, look, it's not, not all rainbows and unicorns when it comes to the supplement industries and so we have to like it, it in a sense falls on us as individuals to kind of do our, re our due diligence for our research so this is ultimately why i'm sharing this even though like uh i said like i said i i am biased towards using protein powders because i've been using them for years and like of course i have yet to have any adverse re reactions to them myself and everything so w with me being biased towards using protein powders, powders like i said not seeing any negative impact with them i'm sharing this article so that way people can become aware of like okay so i gotta be aware of like okay the possible side like uh, negative side effects of it and everything so with it being from uh harvard and the dot edu you know it's a reliable source so this is just information for people to kind of think like okay well i i know i need my protein intake and like uh now I know mo most, if not all, uh, nutritional approaches aren't perfect. Okay, so I want to get make sure I make uh, get an intake enough of my protein and everything. So here's this article to look at the negative side effects, so I can make a more informed choice on the stuff that I purchase and everything. So now, does this uh, 
the articles say like, oh, don't buy protein powders. They're all bad and everything. It's like, no, you have to, like I said, do your research and find which ones are good. So now there are a bunch of them that are uh, that are out there that are good. So of course, what the these ones that I'm going to first mention are whey protein based. So like, um, there's, uh, like of course there's Optimal Nutrition Gold Standard, and that's been out there for years. And people will abide like, yes, that's good. Now Dimatize, I have I have personally used both of them, and I I would say I prefer Dimatize. That's another good one. So the current one I'm using right now is. Uh, Athlean X is uh, a Pro G uh, protein powder. And that one has 30 grams in it, so that's another one that's good and everything. So people might be turned off on the price of that and everything. But I know Jeff Cavalier did a whole video breaking down like the the price of uh, the protein per gram and everything. So those those three I've tried and like are good. Now of course, like I've mentioned, it, you might be lactose intolerant and everything and can't handle like st stuff like whey. So in uh, in that case, what you might have to do is do research on plant-based protein powders and find like okay, with, with taking this article into mind like okay, well I need I know that things aren't necessarily regulated by a governing body like this. So it's ultimately left up to the supplement companies. I need to find like a good plant-based protein that it will be good for me so like um, I know nowadays everyone wants a quick easy answer like uh, well which product do I use oh yeah okay here you go unfortunately it's not that simple we uh, the responsibility falls on us as individuals to be able to make uh, informed decisions and everything so that's ultimately why like uh, I do stuff like this is so that way I can you know, give a viewpoint on like okay here's ideas for you to help you make better informed decisions so now I'm not necessarily good a good source for finding plant-based uh, protein powders because it's like a, it's not necessarily something I've really gotten into my I know that like uh, I have tried organs uh, o-r-g-a-i-n I have tried their protein powder it's not bad but it, uh, for me it, it tasted a little too uh, gritty and a little too like a uh, uh, plant-based uh, I, I just didn't really care for it that much because for me I, I I'm again of course uh, this is coming from someone who's biased more towards a, a animal based approach when it comes to nutrition and everything so uh, if you're someone who's uh, more on the plants based side of nutrition and everything and want that plant-based protein powder and everything you might like uh, want to check or gain but like also check uh, check with other people on stuff like that because when it comes to like uh, when it comes to plant based protein powders, I'm not necessarily someone who would be a good source of information for that because my approach has been with the, the whey proteins. So like I said, the three that I've come across that like are pretty much the top of the line are like uh, the Optimal Nutrition Gold Standard, Dimatize, and the like, uh, Athlean X is uh, Pro G30. Uh, Pro, uh, protein powder so now does that mean that the only those three that I mentioned are uh, the w w the only ones that are good out there there no there are other ones that I'm sure that other people can like oh hey like uh, uh, Santa six I think is another one and like uh, I think there's uh, ghost makes a protein powder and of course I know they're usually big on pre-workouts and everything so but like I, I, I personally would have to look at the other brands and everything because it's like a uh, for me, it seems that like I've kind of honed in on the Athlean X Pro 30G because, yeah, that's like a good uh, 55 bucks like for a bag of like a 28 uh, servings, but you get you do get 30 grams of protein in it, and like it, I, I do like uh, I do notice the difference between like a, a decent quality uh, protein powder and not. So like there have been uh, times that I bought like a $20 um, a t a small tub of uh, cheap protein powder from like a grocery store and everything and it's like yeah I can definitely uh, I, I can definitely notice the difference because it's like uh, I've been using stuff like, like I said uh, protein powder for years so I I can d uh, tell the difference between a decent uh, protein powder and a uh, not so decent protein powder so when it comes to actually uh, like whey protein what you want to make sure is like with uh, getting into the quality you want to make sure you're getting isolate versus uh, concentrate 
Now, Isla is more expensive because it goes through like an additional, uh, it goes through more filtration process and everything. So the Isla is going to be more expensive, but with that, you know, you're getting better quality protein and everything. So of course, budget is going to be a factor. So like uh, getting a concentrate that like uh, the 20 buck uh, uh, tub that I mentioned, I mean, uh, I know Target has a $20 one uh, that you can get and everything that's like, it's cheap and like uh, it's effective. And like, of course, if you're tight for money, then yeah, go for it. But like me, I'm geared more towards your things like uh, your Optimal Nutrition, your Dimatize, your uh, Pro 30G for Mapping X. Those are more, uh, uh, those those are going to, uh, you're going to spend more money on those. But you know, like uh, it's a case of, in this case, uh, it's like a, you, yes, you get what you pay for type of deal. So I'm just kind of putting out information here on like a, the whole protein powder and like using this article, be like, yes, there is negative side effects to using protein powders. So you kind of have to take that in mind. And uh, I will link the uh, link in the comments like usual and everything so people can go look at the article. And so this way, like uh, like always with the articles I share, people uh, with the supplements I've gone over already and just like this one, that this is in a sense so that way people can sit here and get pointed in the right direction and hopefully can, people can make better more informed decisions on the stuff that when it comes to uh, nutrition like uh, what we eat and the supplements we use to be able to make better informed decisions on the products that we actually buy and uh, use our hard-earned money on stuff like that